Well, I've entitled my message today, Running on Empty. Running on Empty. Now, let me share some scripture, then I'm going to explain to you some things that are not so pleasant. And we'll start off with the not so pleasant, but we'll end up on a high note. How's that sound? Because I want to be real today. I want us to be real. I want us to see things as they really are. Because we do have a lot of people who are actually running on empty. But then we're going to talk about how to run on empty. Scripture says in Isaiah 45, and my thoughts are coming from chapter 45 of Isaiah, so that from the rising of the sun to the place of its setting, people may know there is none besides me. I am the Lord, and there is no other. I form the light and create darkness. I bring prosperity and create disaster. And you, we saw that when Israel was coming out of Egypt. We saw the miracles and the signs and wonders of God that God brought on Egypt to get them to the place where they would release God's people as an example of that. He says, I, the Lord, do all these things. So we know that God is And we know that God is in charge. And I'm telling you, that phrase today to say that God's in charge is an extremely, extremely important phrase. It's an extremely important thing to understand. Because what we're going to share in just a moment is so heart-wrenching, so, so bad, that somebody could say, where is God? Well, God is. God is in charge. And we shared a message last week that We are in a mess today because we thought we knew better than God. He said in verse 18 here, for this is what the Lord says. He who created the heavens, he is God. He who fashioned and made the earth, he founded it. He did not create it to be empty, but formed it to be inhabited. He says, I am the Lord. And there is no other. God's intention was to have a habitation, was to have a people that he could connect with and fellowship with and relate with and be in connection with. As we shared last week, and it was, it was ruined, it was spoiled in the garden because of the sin that entered into the world through Adam and Eve. Now, millions of Americans are running on empty today trying to fill their lives with whatever they think will fill that void and that empty filling, that gnawing inside of them. And I'm going to share a few facts with you. And just before I do that, I want to make something very clear. What we're going to hear is being driven by the disconnection that mankind has with God. Bottom line, because of the disconnection that mankind has with God. Because of pain, because of hurt, because of misery that has moved into one's life, because there's no God in their life. And they've made other things, if you please, their God. Or what they would call is what they believe they need and want to to bring that kind of Uh, fulfillment and that nurturing that they believe they need. But it's coming from a deep-rooted pain and hurt and misery and unsettledness and unresolved issues because of what they go through in life right from birth on, what they go through. So here are five examples that kind of sets the stage in here. And again, a little bit not so pleasant, but being real, what's going on today. First of all, Nearly 14 million adults abuse alcohol or are an alcoholic or have alcoholic problems in America. And there's a reason for this. And this doesn't include youth and children, by the way. Yes, children. Yes, children. Read your stats. Beware. Nearly 14 million adults. Now, I'd like you to answer the question. Every time I say why, I want you to just repeat back to me, okay? Here's what I want you to repeat, what's at the bottom of the screen. So why are there so many millions of people addicted to alcohol? Why? (laughs) Running on empty. 
20 years ago, you were considered weird, crazy, you would feel uncomfortable. If you brought up the subject matter of pornography, you felt uncomfortable. Today, researchers are saying that now you're considered weird and different if you don't have some type of a porn addiction or porn practice. In 2011, there were 260 million porn sites recorded in America. That averaged to one per American in our country. So every American could have their own personal porn site if they wanted it in numbers. Just one of those porn sites called Pornhub, which I've never opened up, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> Just one of them called Pornhub, listen to this carefully now, in 2017, are you ready for this? This is staggering. Got 28.5 billion, not million, billion visits in that year alone. They tracked it. Pornhub, 2017. 28.5 billion visits. This is 1,000 visits a second totaling in a year, 78, not a year, a day, I'm sorry, 78.1 million a day visits. 78.1 million a day just on Pornhub site alone. Why is this? <laughs> because they're running on empty. In America, 23 million Americans go in debt gambling a year. 23 million the estimated costs per person of indebtedness in these 23 million Americans calculated to $55,000 per person. That was the average. That the average person of 23 Americans going to debt, $55,000 a year. Americans in 2016, say 2016, alone lost 116 point billion dollars in gambling. That is staggering, folks. 116.9 billion dollars alone in gambling. Why? <laughs> Running on empty. In 2017, an estimated 30.5 million Americans 12 and up were current illicit drug users. In other words, these were drug users that were beyond the normal drugs that you might get at a pharmacy, et cetera, et cetera. 30.5 million. Why is this, folks? Because they are running on empty. Every 13 seconds, there is a divorce in America. Every 13 seconds. That's 277 divorces per hour. 6,646 per day, 46,523 per week, totaling 2,419,196 divorces per year. Why is this? Because America is running on empty. Now, I want to go back to something I just said a moment ago. I know that isn't the most pleasant news to bring to the pulpit after such a great, beautiful celebration today. But there's a reason I'm doing it. Because America is in trouble. People's lives are in trouble. People's lives are running on empty. And they're getting deeper, deeper. And here's what happens with these things. Maybe they started by just playing around with it. Didn't mean to get so addicted, so hooked. Maybe that was the case. Maybe a friend did it, a, attempted it. Maybe a peer pressure. Maybe there was that something on inside. I believe it was mainly that, that there's something on inside and they tried these things. And, but here's the hardest part of all this. When a person starts to search for fulfillment and peace and joy in their lives and they start to tamper with these things and play with these things and get involved with these things, it, they get into it to the point where they get hooked on it and become addicted to it. Now it's not so easy to get out of it. They continue on in their addiction. 
But it's driven by pain and misery and unsettledness and the gnawing inside. And so they get hooked on those things. Now, the Bible says in Isaiah 45, 21, again, chapter 45, verse 21. And by the way, I do not know the present stats of these things. You can understand that some of these stats aren't going to be available yet for like 2018, et cetera, et cetera. So keep that in mind. So these are older stats, 216, 217. As the update, we learn more about what's really going on. I know that. But verse 21 says this. Declare what is to be, present it, let them take counsel together. Who foretold this long ago? Who declared it from the distant past? Who did from the distant past? Was it not I, the Lord? And there is no God apart from me. Now, if there is no God apart from him, and God is, and God's in control, and God knows our comings and our goings, and God created us, then it brings us to a simple conclusion. There is no answer but God. That means that God is the answer. That means connection with God, relationship with God, fellowship with God, folks, is the answer. It's the answer. We're not going to find it in those other things that we work so hard to find it. We're not going to find it in things. We're not going to find it in money. We're not going to find it in possessions. We're not going to find it in pleasure. We're going to only find that deep settledness and peace and strength that one can have and joy in their life that lets them lay their head on the pillow at night and sleep well and in safety and in comfort and with assurances and assurity that no matter what happens through that night that God forbid something happened, they know where they're going to end up in eternity. They're going to end up with the Lord. It's clearly understood that if this is the case, God is and God's in control and he creates light and darkness and he, he does all these things, then he must be the answer. And so here's what it says. And there is no God apart from me, a righteous God and a savior. There is none but me. Now, he's a righteous God who is a savior. And it means that if we have the savior then we are to live a righteous life. So God is righteous, and he's the Savior. We meet the Savior, we live a righteous life. The Lord is burning something in my heart. I shared it with my wife yesterday. And I feel the Lord is sharing something in my heart about us for our church. That how is it, and I said this to my wife, I said, "Hun, when, when we have a great time with the Lord, let's say in the morning, you get up in the morning, you have time with the Lord, you have devotions, or you come to church on a Sunday. This has been a beautiful day of celebration, a beautiful time of expression of worship and praise unto the Lord. But that's not the end of it. It's only part of the whole. And so many times when we leave church, if we're not careful, we, we, we out of conditioned out of our routine of life, we slip into our normal, everyday, MO mode of operation without any real thought that there was something to happen that was more than just come to church and express this joyous moment of celebration. But somehow it's got to go out there with us. And, and at the same time, you get up in the morning and you have those great devotions and you go to work and it's like, and you know, all of a sudden, that's, and there's this disconnect. There's this, why does that happen? Have you ever wondered? Why is it that you feel like you cannot sustain this wonderful, joyous experience? Now, grant you, you're going to feel a lot of that when you're all together. Let's be honest. There's a lot of excitement in the air when you get together with God's people. A lot of excitement, a lot of joy, a lot of, hey, 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 it's, it's great, it's exciting. And it's supposed to be that way. Koinonia is a Greek word that means fellowship and, and spiritual connection. It's the Greek word for fellowship, koinonia. And it's a good thing. We love that. We enjoy that. But it's not enough here. I, I was told that there was a round discussion uh, on the radio this week, in Bridge Radio. And uh, I didn't listen to it. I don't, I don't listen to a, a lot of Christian music. And I know that sounds terrible. I'm not against Christian music. I'm not against Christian music, but I'm so, my mind's got to have the smooth, soft type music. Don't get me wrong. I love the song that Rachel just, don't get me wrong here. I, I love that. I, 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 I'm not against Christian music, but this old man just got to have a quiet sometimes. You know, give me that nice classical music and, you know, do that. 
You know, he can doze off every 10 minutes, wake up and do some more work. You know what I'm talking about. And, uh, but, but Pastor Ryan, I was told that Pastor Ryan, uh, and they took pastors in the air and they had a set down discussion on the radio. And I was invited and I, Pastor Ryan went and represented all of us and our church and different pastors there. And they went around asking questions. What can more can, and basically I hope I, I'm close to what was said, Mahan, I hope I have it right. What do we do, with, basically what do you do with Easter? Is it just, what do you do for Sunday? What do you do to keep the Easter thing going to that effect? And Pastor Ryan nailed it. And other pastors were saying, well, we make sure our Sunday morning services are in place. Pastor Ryan, I was told, said, well, we take the message with us during the weekend. We evangelize the lost. Yes. That's what you do. That's what you do. Now, listen, I'm going to say something that's very gutsy. And you can fire me. It's all right. But I espouse something to other pastors and to other people when I speak. I'm going to tell you one reason why I don't always listen to Christian music. You ready? I like Christian music. That's my wife. You ready? Listen to a lot of the messages in Christian music today. Listen carefully. It's all about us. Very little Christian music on the radio today. I listen for it all the time. Where is the music to reach the lost with? Where's the music that reaches the lost? On Sunday mornings across America, we're going to sing about God. We should. But folks, it's not all about us. I, I, I love it at Calvary because we put evangelism in our music. We take our music out of the walls of this church. And honey, if we're going to sing up a storm in the house of God, then we better speak up a storm out there about why we sing up a storm in the house of God. <laughs> Think about it. <laughs> If I'm going to get excited about God on Sunday morning, then I better get excited about God out there because we've got something to be excited about. And our music needs to be evangelistic. Our lifestyles need to be evangelistic. Our conversation needs to be evangelistic, folks, because that's how we bring people to the attention of Jesus, who's a righteous God, who is a Savior. There is none but me. This says to me that there is only one way that anyone can find True, lasting, satisfying fulfillment in life that is about God. And that is God. That's the only way. And there is no God apart from me, a righteous God, and a Savior. There is none but me. Remember, God said in verse 18, he did not create the world to be empty, but to be inhabited. Remember? For this is what the Lord says. He who created the heavens, he is God. He who fashioned and made the earth, he founded it. He did not create it to be empty, but formed it to be inhabited. He says, he says, I am the Lord and there is no other. Now, pastor, all we've heard out of your title is America, how it's running on empty. So what's the point? Here's the point. They that wait upon the Lord should not be weary. They shall run. They shall run and not faint. They shall walk. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. They shall run. So how do I run? On empty. Folks, the reason that we can run on empty is because we have an empty tomb. And because the tomb is empty, that tells us that Jesus is alive. Now I can run in Jesus on an empty tomb because my empty tomb isn't because I'm empty and depleted of God. It's because I'm filled with God. I can now run empty because of an empty tomb. But full, inhabited with engaged in and engaged with the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. In other words, the tomb is empty because Christ rose from the dead. And because he did, we can run with fulfillment because he rose from the dead because the tomb is now empty. It's not a neat thought that when they went to the tomb, they found it empty. I know in the production, they show the different scenarios, what people thought and what people believed. But one of the greatest witnesses that Jesus was in that tomb and now was gone was that his 
apparel was folded up and laying in there. It goes to show you why Jesus is a neat Jesus, just so you know that. <laughs> right? So, just went there. Guys, you know, our cars, our garages, I'm guilty of it. He was a neat Jesus. We can learn something about Jesus being organized and detailed. Or whoever it was that straightened up his claws when he left. Because of the empty tomb. So here we go. An empty cross means that Christ came down and was placed in the tomb. Because of an empty tomb, because of he rose, he is alive. And because he is alive, he can live inside and fill up the emptiness. I now can run on an empty tomb because he is not there, because he's in my heart. That's why I know we can run on empty, meaning the empty tomb. He rose from the dead. In conclusion, I want to share with you that the only way we can break the bondages, the only way that we can break the things that chain us and debilitate us and cripple us and brings us to that place of misery that it causes us to search for something. And again, the deadly thing about searching for something in these five examples, and there's so many more, is that we can get hooked on and addicted to it, and now we think we've got to have that all the time. Now we're even more desperate than we ever were because we find our bodies being depleted, our soul, our mind, our spirits being depleted of life and joy and peace and strength. And I believe that the many who receive the Lord, and I really believe with all of my heart that a whole lot more people got saved than we have numbers for. I know that Pastor Ryan said everybody's head bowed and eyes were closed. I cheated, Pastor Ryan. I was going like this. I was trying to help out all the hands going up. I cheated. It was a good cheat, though. Because... You could hear people praying, and I was wondering, did they raise their hand or not? So I was spying. But our team were sharp. They were looking for the hands of those who maybe didn't come to the front. And they went to them, and they handed them the booklet to help them to go on the Lord because they raised their hand. Were you amazed, if you were in the production services, were you amazed how many people were praying that prayer? I don't think it was all Christians praying that prayer to help people. I think there's a lot more people who give their hearts to the Lord that day. And eternity will tell the fruit. It'll tell the story. But today we want to add to that story. And we're going to pray together here and give you an opportunity to receive the Lord as your Savior or to rededicate your heart today. Because there is no God but him. Because there is no other God and he's the creator, then he's the answer. He's the answer. Fully, solely, and completely. He's the answer, church. He is a righteous God who's a savior. We serve the Lord. We give our hearts to the Lord. We become righteous. And now we serve him back from what he gave us. So we're going to pray. And as we pray, you pray long. It's okay if you whisper that prayer. It's okay if you pray it out loud. It's okay if you pray it in your mind. I don't care. God doesn't care. What's important, that you make a full commitment to the Lord today because he is God, because he is in charge, and he can lift you up from your hurt, your misery, your pain, your addiction. He can break it. He can lift you up. He can set you free today through a genuine prayer of inviting him into your heart. So pray with me, if you would, if you find your place in that, in that place today. And by the way, uh, I want to I say this. There's a card in the back of the pew. Someone can hand it to you if you can't reach it. Or on your attendance slip, please, please, folks, please, please, we beg you. We beg you, we beg you, we beg you. Please jot down, let us know, I did pray today. Make sure there's information. We're not trying to get in and attack you with some. We want to help you, help you, help you, help you to take this the next step forward in developing a relationship with the Lord. 
after you pray today. So let's pray this prayer together. Those of you that would desire to pray this prayer today. And then the ushers are going to make their way to the front. And as the band comes out and we continue to worship a couple more songs, they'll be taking the offering at the same time. So gentlemen, you can get yourself ready and come on down and let's pray this prayer together. Jesus, I recognize the need for you in my life. I know I have sinned and have fallen short of your glory. I pray that you will forgive me and that you will come into my life forever. In your name I pray, amen. Lord, there might be many who have prayed this prayer before but didn't feel like it went anywhere. Well, that could be different today. If they'll just let us know, we can take it different. We can take them in a different journey. And you know who's prayed this prayer. And you know who's on the line right now knowing they need to pray this prayer. May they not forget what they need to do. It's a simple coming to you and asking for forgiveness and receiving your Savior. Lord, there's nothing better that can happen on this Easter Sunday than to come into contact with the living God. We can run on empty because the tomb is empty. And they that wait upon the Lord shall run and not be weary. Thank you, Father. And everyone prayed in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Have a wonderfully blessed Easter. Amen.